Nicolò Barella has been linked with a move to Newcastle with a reported offer of around 60 million euros. Oh. Don, your two allegiances are oh. well chronicled, as well as your Serie A uh, allegiances. What do you reckon? What do I reckon? Um, I don't see it happening, but They've I would love it if no. it did. Huh? They've already said no. They, it's I certainly just, not at that price. Well, no, not at 50 million quid. I mean, I would happily pay some part of his wages to try and get him in at Newcastle, <laughs> and whatever that is, tenner, 20 quid. Um, because, again, like Bellingham, different sort of player, but a guy that I think is an incredible player to watch. Energy, covers every blade of grass, good in the tackle, very aggressive. A little bit impulsive at times, in terms of yellows, close to reds. Um, but I like that in him. I like the character in him. If Newcastle got him, because I think that's that's the wonder of being a Newcastle fan. What's going to happen next? With all this money behind Newcastle, how do they play it? Do they go in for the sort of Galactico signings? Do they try and play it a little bit slow? But I tell you what, if they manage to get Barella, James Madison and Bruno Gimaresh already there, I mean, you're talking some midfield, some midfield three there. That Slightly is. lopsided midfield, isn't it? A little no, don't worry about that. I'm not going to give no. them all away. <laughs> all right. Okay, there you go. Uh, but I tell you, if they got him, Gab, it would be some signing. So, Gab, who's this new guy? Uh, and why did Barcelona sign him? No, no, what's his name? Say uh, it. Mikhaili Faye. Hey, that's, that's not bad, okay. I, I think. Um, so, he's apparently this phenom. Uh, what is he? Center back. He's a center back. He's from... Uh, He's from Senegal, but he was playing in these are the wonderful vagaries of the transfer market. Everybody's known who he is since he was 15. But somehow, and I would suspect there might be an agent or two involved, he played last year uh, for Kustosica, I hope I'm pronouncing it correct, which is a team in the Croatian second division. Uh, only made his debut in March. Um, Have you seen him? I just YouTube. Um, I seems like... He seems like an 18-year-old guy who's a very good athlete yeah. um, playing against players who aren't very good because yeah. that's the, the level. Um, with Barcelona, obviously, they still need to you know, dot some I's and cross some T's before they can actually make this official, but he has committed to them. I think this is a depth signing at the back if it works out. Mm -hmm. um, I think people need to realize that a lot of things with players, as you know, especially players from countries outside Europe or outside, you know, the big five or big 10 leagues in Europe often aren't straightforward and they often take different routes yeah. to getting to the top. But, yeah. you know, Barcelona know their, they know their players. And if they scout this guy young, you know, there, there's, there's definitely something there. Riyad Mahrez is the latest big name to be linked with a move to Saudi Arabia with Al Ahli showing an interest. He's 32, has a deal through 2025. If you were Chichi, Begiristein and mm -hmm. Pat, you just say, eh, we're not going to give him a new deal because he's really going to be 34 at the end of this one. If we get a fee, let's let him go. We got um, Bernardo Silva. We got Phil Foden. How long does Bernardo Silva stay around? He's always made noises that he might... Yeah, Phil Foden. Phil, Phil Foden. You might not have Gundogan. Cole Palmer. Okay. Are they good enough to take Man City to a treble Rico again? Lewis. I would keep him on. I think he's. I, or are you going to tell him, sorry, Riyad, we're not going to give you a new contract, and I know you have well, a chance to go contract? to Saudi Arabia and make a ton of money. When's his contract up? 2025. Keep him for another year, then. Keep him another year. You, you're in no rush to sell. Un unless you really feel as though he's. Yeah, but then he comes down and he says, look, I was on the bench. I didn't play in the Champions well, League final. I'm playing the FA Cup final. Well, then what do you want to do? Because Pep's the master at saying to Leroy Sane, what do you want to do? Do you want to move on? Go on, move on. Raheem Sterling, uh, do you want to move on? I, I think on. I think um, what's really interesting here is with all the Saudi talk, I, I think they have yet to pay an actual transfer fee, right? It's yeah. all been free agents. If you're if he wants to go, and that's that's the first discrimination, he goes to Pep and he says, hey, what are your plans for me next season? Yeah. Um, I don't think Pep would view him as somebody who's irreplaceable, right? Because Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, none of these guys are irreplaceable. If you can get a fee for him and he's gotten good money and he wants to go, I think by all means... I think you let him go and then you know, deal with Bernardo Silva and Gundogan. If you have to go and spend money, it's not, it shouldn't be difficult for Manchester City no. to attract players, I, right? I, I, I think the luxury... And given his age profile, I think, I think the, it makes sense. I think the luxury that Man City are in at the minute, and I, and I can't think of it happening at any other club around Europe at this present time, where Man City seem to be the club at the moment that are not going to get cherry-picked for their biggest stars. So all the players that leave Man City, whoever they are, it's because Guardiola doesn't want them anymore. As I said, Leroy Sane, Raheem Sterling, okay. Jesus, Zinchenko. You can all move because I'll buy better players. Yeah, so I, I don't know if he feels quite that way about Gundogan 
or Bernardo no, Silva. No, Gund- Gundogan, you wouldn't because he turns into Zidane right. at this time of the year, doesn't he? Yeah. Because he's, he's, his football brain is, is high-level IQ. He's some player. So that sort of player you wouldn't want to lose. But if Gundogan says, well, I've just won the treble, I want to move on, I want to try Barca, I want to try something different, then obviously... Yeah, then you've you got know, to replace him. You, 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 you sort of find a way. Ah, oh, Juan Cuadrado, one of my favourite Juve players. What did you call him? Juan Cuadrado. Oh, okay, I understood something else. Go ahead. Uh, one of my favourite Juve players. Uh, he's going to be leaving. No. He's 35 years old. He's wears it well. Wages. He wears 35 well. Like, I think he's I think he's been a really, really good servant to the club Definitely. over the years. Um, in some ways underrated. I don't think he had a great season this past year. Well, who did Most Juve like, players well, didn't. Yeah. Um, they need to move on. They need to cut wages. And I think... You know, keeping a guy at 35, not the right thing. You're also keeping Bonucci around for another year, and then he's going to have his retirement next summer. Um, Strange club at the minute, Juve, ain't they? Not until, I mean, obviously off the off the off the fields, off the field, and that's that's a whole new story. But uh, you, you keep reading reports where normally inside a dressing room, if a manager has a go of a player, it's inside a dressing room. Allegri's criticised his players to the press. Bonucci and I think Chiesa have criticised the manager to the press all seems very unhealthy to me I think it's also very honest given what they went through this season um, and I also think from a league's perspective coming out and saying things like well if it wasn't for the points penalty we would have been third and and we reached the semi-finals of the Copa. I'm just like just shut up just shut up like, like you're not I, I don't know who you're trying to who you're trying to mock who you're trying to impress it sounds like you're taking the mickey out of you the fans after what they've been through just be quiet, head down. The only reason you're still in a job is because you're too expensive to fire. Yeah. And that's a sad find state. that's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Well, find your mojo, because you, you know, there's a good manager in there. You, you, you. Sh- when you were forced to play the kids, eventually you shot the, the kids showed you that Definitely. they're actually good. Yeah. And go down that route and say this is a transition next year. We're going to build something and get out of your hole that way. And. I think that's how you have to approach it if you're if you're Max Allegri. Juventus uh, fixed their asking price for Weston McKenney after his unsuccessful loan spell at Leeds United. It's thirty five million. Does that seem fair to you, Don? Overpriced, in my opinion. I'm not a Weston McKenney fan. Don't know what he does. I think he runs around, he closes down, but he doesn't score goals, doesn't get assists. Not really a defensive player. Sometimes plays off the right. It's not his best position. Sometimes he plays central. I could think of better players to spend close to forty million on. I don't know if you're a fan. It's a lot of money. I, th- I think Juve. You know, we all know, like Premier League. There's like a Premier League premium to transfer fees, and I think Juve are hoping that because he was in England, because people saw him. Although maybe it's not. <laughs> it's a good thing because he <laughs> speaks English. You know, a thirty-five million is a price for a Premier League club. I think that drops to half if another club were to say, "All right, we believe in this. We believe we can get you back and into the player that." I think to be fair, he was for a short spell yeah. at Juve. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not the best time. No. Uh, so Bayern are looking for a centre forward gap. Eintracht Frankfurt's Randall call it money is the answer. Is he the answer? Is he? Uh, not at those numbers that they're chucking out. I mean, Eintracht happily quoting like 100 million, 120 million. That's just a standard fee now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I mean, you know. 1900. <laughs> Easy there, dude. I know you could have scored the winning goal in the World Cup final, and I obviously had a good season. Um, I'd also remind people that Tuchel won a Champions League with Kai Havertz as a center forward. So maybe he doesn't, he's not necessarily wed to the center forward. I'd also remind people that what happened the last time Tuchel said, yeah, let's go and spend big money on a center forward. And he got Romelu Lukaku. Mm. So... Obviously, it's a different situation. Colmar is younger and so on. I think there's a price at which it makes sense. Yeah. But it's not the prices. I think they're going to have to work on this. And I'd also look at other options. I've heard of Lavic as a possible destination. Comes with a ton of baggage, but also very young. Uh, and also, I mean, his technical ability, is, mm. together with his side, is, yeah, yeah. is what makes people get people excited, right? Mm. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.